Hey everyone, it's Sarah. The Microsoft Lumia 735 is an interesting piece of technology. Instead of working with Android like Google has done with the Nexus and Pixel, Microsoft has decided to go their own route and decide their own operating system to run on it. This has pros and cons, and I've had my share of experience with this phone, with almost everyone that I pass, whether it be in, you know, in my classes or just friends, they always have something negative to say about it. So let's take a look, shall we? So first, let's start off with a quick summary of, you know, what you get with the phone. So upon opening the box, you won't really find much. Other than the phone, you'll find a USB cable and a wall adapter that you can use to charge it. So despite this lack of accessories, it comes as a relatively attractive price point. While the Lumina 735 originally retails around $200, you can pick one up for even cheaper. The Lumia 735 measures 134.7 millimeters high, 68.5 millimeters wide, and 8.9 millimeters thick, though it's actually surprisingly light, weighing in at just shy of 135 grams. The 735 features a 4.7 inch screen and runs at 60 hertz refresh rate, though only at 720p resolution. The lack of pixels here, however, does mean you get an improved battery life. More on that later. As far as storage goes, the Lumia 735 unfortunately only has 16 gigabytes built in, which isn't great here, but is usable for most people. This can be remedied, however, by using a micro SD card, which can expand your storage by up to 128 gigabytes. Unfortunately, the 735 only has 1 gigabytes of RAM, which isn't much by today's standards, but for Windows Mobile, it runs just fine. The battery on the Lumia 735 is pretty good. While the battery has a capacity of only 2200 milliamp hours, it can easily, you know, I can easily get a day on a full charge and could likely go to a day and a half with no issues. On top of this, however, it does support key wireless charging. So <laughs> you can charge it by simply setting it on a supporting charging pad. The cameras on the 735 aren't half bad either. The primary camera operates at 6.7 megapixels while well, at the front facing camera operates at five, both of which are capable of shooting 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Physical aspects of the phone aside, the odd shape of the Lumia 735 makes it a bit hard to find decent quality protective cases. While there are a fair share of decent protective cases, you won't find an honor box, that's for sure. And a lot of cases you'll find here are mostly decorative, Decorative is sort of relative though, since most of them are single colors and you know, they aren't too fancy. Moving on to the actual Windows on phone experience. The interface is nothing new if you're familiar with Windows Mobile. For those of you that aren't familiar, Windows Mobile is Microsoft's own operating system that was designed to work something like Windows does on your computer. It pays homage to the start screen found in Windows 8 and 8.1, and the apps on your home screen are in a form of similar looking tiles. This experience is a fairly large drawback for most people, especially those used to iOS and Android. While these aren't exactly limited from what you could go on, have more fully featured operating systems, things can get a bit hidden at times. Unlike the tiered settings like in Android and iOS, the settings here are in one giant list, which can be clunky and cumbersome to navigate. The interface, while okay on a phone, seems more suited for tablets and larger touchscreen devices. And as a side effect of this, it isn't always as popular for many people. It seems that developers have taken note of this as well, given the lack of apps available for users of the Windows Phone operating system. In particular, uh, Facebook causes a lot of problems on a daily basis, and the app sometimes will even just crash entirely. On top of that mess, Snapchat, which, you know, everyone seems to be using these days, doesn't exist on the Windows phone. So overall, while the user interface isn't horrible, the lack of apps for Windows Mobile makes the Lumia 735 almost hard to use too extensively. 
I can't fault this to the phone, but it's worth noting that developers don't exactly devote a lot of time to maintaining apps for Windows Mobile, and you can tell. Problem side, the system itself is fairly decent. Interaction is quick and snappy, and it's very easy to use alongside a Windows computer. The settings and features that you know from Windows 8 and Windows 10 are there, including everything from Cortana and the ability to change the accent color of the tiles. With the ability to link your phone to your Microsoft account, everything can work seamlessly between your phone and your computer. Photos you take are automatically synced to your computer, and you can get push notifications right within Windows from your phone. I've had the Lumia 735 for almost two years now, and while I dislike the lack of freedom it has over Android and iOS, with more complete app stores, the features and usability from Windows carry well into the mobile environment. Speaking of apps, NordVPN is a simple-to-use VPN app that helps you browse the internet privately. NordVPN has apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, and it eliminates all the crap that usually is involved with setting up a VPN. You can connect with the push of a button to one of over 900 servers in 57 countries, eliminating the need to configure any complicated manual settings. You can get one year subscription for only $48 or a two year subscription for $79 by using promo code security1 or security2 at checkout. Click the link in the video description to learn more. Well, that's it for this review, guys. You know the drill. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you think it sucked, you know what to do. Let us know. Um, <clears throat> what do you guys think about the, the Windows Phone? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, you guys. And don't forget to subscribe to A&T Tech Tips for more videos like this one.